manhunt is underway for a bomber targeting bank cash machines. Police tonight are on alert. Someone used some kind of explosive device to blow up an ATM. But the big questions are what type of person would blow up an ATM and how far could they take these crimes? Diese Täter kennen keine Skrupel. Die fahren in dem Wissen, dass sie jeden Meter jemanden aus dem Leben reißen können. Und möglichst alle erwischen. Kirspe, Germany. February 1st, 2023. It's the middle of the night when a black Audi speeds through the small German town of Kirspe. The car is breaking every speed limit until it suddenly stops in front of the local bank's ATM. Two masked men jump out of the car, run towards the ATM, and quickly start to dabble with the cash machine when suddenly... The men had blown up the ATM, but because of a badly placed explosive, the ATM was still intact and required another set of explosives to be fully cracked. As the criminals attach the second set of explosives, a man sees the entire thing and quickly calls the police. Immediately after the man hangs up, the second set of explosives go off, and this time the cash machine is fully cracked. The masked men scramble to get the cash boxes out of the ATM, but after retrieving the first set of cash boxes, they can hear a siren, and it's approaching fast. At the same time, the man who alerted the police takes out his phone and films the following sequence. Hey, warum bleiben die Bullen dahinter? Das sind Angsthasen, ey. Was sind das für Angsthasen? The police don't manage to catch the criminals at the scene, and a wild late night chase begins through the state of Nord Rhine, Westphalia. Both criminals and police reach speeds up to 120 miles per hour. And after a few minutes of pursuit, the suspects start using high-intensity laser pointers to blind the police. This forces the authorities to stop the pursuit as they almost crash into a house. And for a few seconds, the criminals thought they were safe. But luckily for the police, a helicopter had joined the chase seconds before the police cars were forced to stop. After a short-lived celebration, the suspects realized that the situation had gone completely out of control. They accidentally drove into the town of Odenthal, and this was a crucial mistake. As they sped through the town, they took a wrong turn and ended up in a dead-end street. With no more options left, the men got out of the car and fled into the forest to use the tall trees and bushes as hideouts. But unbeknownst to them, the police chopper was equipped with infrared cameras and was tracking their every move. In only 30 minutes, the men went from having over 50,000 euros in their car to lying in a bush knowing that they might get caught at any moment. And only a few instants later, Dozens of police units were moving through the forest, capturing the criminals one by one and using nothing else but pepper spray. The criminals turned out to be three young men from Amsterdam, a hub for organized and independent crime that plays a big role in the world of ATM crackers. Ganderkesee, Germany. In the middle of the night, a resident of the small town of Ganderkesi suddenly wakes up. He thinks it's 8 a.m. and time to get ready for work, but when he looks at his alarm clock, he realizes that it's only 4 a.m. Seconds later, he hears several loud explosions outside of his apartment and quickly rushes to the window. Confused as to what's going on, he looks through the blinds and sees something extremely unexpected.
Once again, the police aren't able to stop the robbers at the scene, and the situation turns into a high-speed chase through the small town, over the highway, and through a few small roads until reaching the highway towards Bremen. But unfortunately for the authorities, the criminals were incredibly good drivers and managed to shake off not only the police cars, but also a police chopper that had joined the chase. You may think that a successful ATM robbery like this is a one-off case. However, many times the suspects never even encounter police and manage to easily disappear after blowing up their target. In fact, the risk-to-reward ratio is so good that there have been over 450 cash machine robberies in Germany in 2022, more than ever before. This is because Germany is a highly cash-driven society, and most ATMs have anywhere from 20 to 60,000 euros in them, and even though they contain a lot of money, they're barely secured at all. They're protected by nothing more than some old security cameras. And, as we will see in a moment, pretty much anyone who finds the right cash machine could easily blow it up. First, ATM robbers only need special silicone, or another strong sealing material, an industrial hose, an explosive gas mixture, a fuse, and a lighter. Second, they search for an unprotected ATM located on the outskirts of a city or in a small town. Then, the criminals wait until the middle of the night and drive to the ATM in a stolen car to avoid any links to their own property. Once they get to the cash machine, they seal the entire ATM except for a small crack in which they insert the hose. They then connect the hose to their gas container and fill up the insides of the ATM with their explosive gas. After a few minutes, they retrieve the hose and insert the fuse into the hole so that they can ignite the gas from a safe distance. The following explosion of the gas mixture smashes the cash boxes into the back of the ATM and makes them accessible to the criminals. Even though this technique is still viable with many ATMs, a new and more dangerous method is becoming increasingly popular. This new technique involves high-potency explosives made from Semtex, BKKs, and other explosive materials. And in some cases, this won't just blow up the cash machine, but also destroy the entire surrounding area. Despite the fact that this is dangerous for both the criminals and people living close to the ATMs, the German police have reported that over 87% of the cash machine robberies in 2022 have been carried out with these kinds of highly dangerous explosives. And this of course begs the question, just how are these people getting their hands on all of these highly dangerous explosives? It's about 4 a.m. when a black Audi speeds towards the ATM at the Morwick shopping center in the Dutch city of Breda. Two masked men quickly exit the vehicle, break the glass doors of the building, and run inside. Only minutes later, a massive explosion breaks the back wall of the building and destroys the cash machine that it contained. The men are then seen running back to their car with a bunch of cash boxes, but as they begin to speed off, they're spotted by a patrolling police car. The thieves and police speed through the city of Breda and eventually take the highway towards the Belgian border, where most of the Dutch officers stop the chase. The criminals thought that they had gotten away, but as they sped towards the city of Antwerp, they noticed that they were being chased once more. It turns out that the Belgian authorities had been alerted to the situation and had mobilized their special units to try and catch the suspects. Then, shortly after exiting the city of Antwerp via the E313, they did the unthinkable. As they sped towards the E34 highway, the criminal's car suddenly slowed down. But instead of surrendering, one of them leaned out of the window with a Kalashnikov and began firing at the authorities. This did buy the criminals some more time, but as they fled via the E-34, they drove over a spike strip and eventually crashed into a barrier near Oud Turnhout. As the men tried to get out of the broken car, the police fired some warning shots and told them to get to the ground. However, the criminals thought that the police were firing on them, which led to a firefight between the two groups. 
As the man with the Kalashnikov fired at the police, the two other suspects ran into the nearby forest before the last man also joined them in an attempt to escape on foot. The police then began a large-scale manhunt with police dogs, police choppers with and without infrared cameras, and dozens of police units on the ground. This manhunt went on for a few hours. As the suspects were on their way to use a bus to escape, they were spotted and caught at a bus stop near Brasshot, bringing what many considered a movie-like chase to an end. The criminal group included two Amsterdam residents, one named Akrof L and the other named Abdelaziz A, as well as a third man from Belgium known only as Imad A. Akrof L and Abdelaziz A were both sentenced to 18 years in prison, and Imad A, who was responsible for shooting at the police, received 20 years. But there are several interesting aspects of the group that possibly linked them to a North African organized crime structure. They, as well as most other ATM robbers, are suspected of being part of one of Europe's most powerful criminal organizations, a group with ties to the most powerful South American and European cartels, and even the Iranian Secret Service. There's people getting killed left and right, there's gangs fighting. Now, a string of mafia-style murders in the Netherlands has led to questions about whether drug gangs are threatening the rule of law in the country. So the, the lawyer was shot brazenly in front of his family in his home. Peter de Vries was gunned down in Amsterdam on Tuesday. Most of these high-profile murders in the recent years have been linked to what is called the Mokro Mafia, described by police as a well-oiled killing machine. Police raided a warehouse and uncovered seven shipping containers that had been converted into cells and featured a heat and soundproof torture chamber. Last year, a van drove into the newspaper building, causing it to set on fire. Dutch police have increased security around Prime Minister Mark Rutte after receiving intelligence of a possible attack by criminals linked to the drug trade. The Mokro Mafia is a group of criminal Moroccan organizations that have taken over the underground world of the Netherlands and Belgium. These clans are linked to tons of drugs, both South American and European cartels, hundreds of weapons, and even the Iranian Secret Service, who has been using the Mokro Mafia as some sort of European kill squad. One of these organizations has firm control over Amsterdam, and this is the Tagi clan led by a Moroccan man named Ridwan Taghi. He is one of the most powerful kingpins in Europe and was part of the international super cartel that had taken over Europe's cocaine trade. In any event, his organization and family members are directly connected to several ATM robberies, with the most prominent case being that of Anwar Taghi, one of Ridwan's cousins. In 2016, Anwar and two other men blew up an ATM in the German city of Meppen. But as they tried to escape back to the Netherlands, they had a terrible accident. The driver, Sadiq C., immediately died upon impact. And another man involved, Kevin H., was seriously injured. The last member, Anwar Taghi, somehow managed to flee the scene and took a taxi to a nearby hotel. However, the taxi driver, alerted the police. Only minutes later, the police would arrest Anwar in the hotel's bathroom. However, it gets even crazier. February 2020, Osnabrück, Germany. It's the middle of a busy day when a police officer of the Osnabrück police station gets a call from an incredibly frustrated man. The caller turned out to be the owner of a cash machine company, and he believed that someone was targeting him and his associates. The man explained that someone was blowing up all of his ATMs and doing so in an almost professional manner. He said that every night at least one of his cash machines was being robbed, and that the perpetrators always knew exactly how to crack the machine. As the man laid out more details, the police officer decided that this should be looked at by his colleagues and opened a case on the situation. It didn't take long for the police to set up a team, and only a few days into the investigation, they noticed that something extremely strange was going on. March 2020. 
Osnabrück, Germany. One of the officers was working on the case late at night, and as he read through some of the business's order documents, he discovered something extremely strange. He found a purchase order for several ATMs to a supposed artist's garage in the Dutch city of Utrecht. He wrote the artist's name down and went through all of his orders, and this is when everything changed. It turns out that the mysterious artist had ordered almost 20 ATMs and had specifically ordered the most common models used in southern Germany and Belgium. This could, of course, have been a coincidence, but the officers decided to further investigate the mysterious artist and his studio. During the next few days, the German police contacted Europol, and together they created a joint investigation team made up of German, Dutch, and Europol agents specialized in ATM crackers. Together, they managed to trace the ATMs back to the cities of Amsterdam and Utrecht, both known for their deep connections to the Mokro Mafia and Ridwan Tagi's Tagi clan. However, only a few weeks after the task force came together, the suspects disappeared. September 2020, Utrecht, Netherlands. A warehouse in Utrecht was wrecked by a massive explosion, killing one person, severely injuring another man, and setting the building on fire. But when the authorities came to investigate the situation, they discovered something completely unexpected. It turned out that the explosion had been caused by a homemade bomb that had been attached to an ATM. And, as you might guess, this was one of the ATMs the supposed artist had ordered a few months before. And the person that had died was, in fact, the police's main suspect. But it gets even crazier. The warehouse was filled with ATMs, explosive materials, and what's even stranger, dozens of encrypted phones and storage devices. As the authorities analyzed these devices, they discovered that the gang was not only practicing blowing up ATMs, but was also recording step-by-step -step tutorials about the entire ordeal. They then sold these recordings to other criminals through Telegram, Signal, and dark web forums. They had basically created an in-person and online ATM robbing school that had taught dozens of crime groups how to crack ATMs. Over the next few weeks, both German and Dutch police units would make arrests in Utrecht, Amsterdam, and Den Haag, bringing the number of arrested suspects up to nine, all of which were men with alleged links to the Mokro Mafia. After further investigation, the police revealed that the group was directly responsible for blowing up at least 15 German ATMs and were responsible for over 2 million euros in damages. And even though the damages caused by the criminals using their recordings is unknown, the estimates go as high as 50 million euros. But as we'll see in a moment, these kind of crime schools are not that uncommon. Many cities have underground schools for pickpockets, illegal shooting ranges for gangs and even assassins, secret weapon and drug dealers, and Mexico even has a well-known Chinese drug school establishment. They're inserting these chemists into Mexico, Mexico, knowing that it's killing the population of the United States and yeah. Canada. Yeah, because those are the guys like in charge of telling cooks the quantities. Mm -hmm. And if the quantities are killing people in the US, that means the fucking quantities of the drug are being controlled by China. But back to the ATM crackers, the question remains, who is responsible for all this madness? So, we already know that there's some sort of connection to organized crime such as the Mokro Mafia, but how big is this connection? The German police released a report on ATM robberies in which they claim that up to 700 North African men are part of a professional criminal structure that is constantly changing and recruiting new members. There also seems to be an obvious connection to the local Dutch and German underworlds, as well as North African criminal organizations. Furthermore, the report claims that most of the members are highly experienced criminals who know exactly what they're doing. So there seems to be an obvious connection to the Mokro Mafia. With hundreds of Moroccan men linked to ATM robberies, the cousin of the Tagi cartel's kingpin who was arrested for an ATM robbery, a training center which dealt mostly with North African people, 
and a police report that claims that there is, in fact, an organized criminal structure made up of hundreds of North African men. However, just how deep this rabbit hole really goes is something we might never really know. Video narrated by Eric Peabody.